Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and if you've just bought yourself a shiny new Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra, these are my top tips for setting it up properly and getting the most out of it. So I'm using the Ultra right now, but most of these tips will apply across the range. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that little bell icon so you don't miss my next video. All right, so let's start by getting it set up properly. Firstly, let's shrink those app icons a little bit so we can fit more on a page. Just pinch in or long press on the home screen, tap settings and then change home screen grid to 5x5 or 5x6. Now you'll notice by default that you have to reach all the way to the top to swipe down for the notification panel, which is a pain on a huge 6.9 inch S20 Ultra. So again, jump into the home screen settings and turn on swipe down for notification panel. Now you can swipe down from anywhere on the home page to open it. For the next tip, open up the panel and then tap the little three dot icon at the top right and go to quick panel layout. And if you turn on show brightness on top, then you can adjust it in the quick shortcuts rather than having to fully open the nav panel. While we're here, if you tap the three dot icon again and then open status bar, this is where you can toggle to show the battery percentage at the top. I really don't know why this isn't enabled as standard. Moving on, and to save some battery and make all the menus a little easier on the eye, jump into the settings, go to display and then turn on dark mode. If you prefer, you can go into the dark mode settings and schedule when it comes on, either by the sun or your own timings, but I tend to keep it on all the time. Number five, and one of the big new features on the S20 range is the 120 Hz screen, but it's actually not turned on by default. So jump into the display settings again, tap motion smoothness, and then switch it to high refresh rate 120 Hz. This makes everything from swiping between screens, opening apps and playing games that support it feel much faster and smoother. However, it does drain your battery about 25% faster than having it at 60Hz. Personally, I do like the extra smoothness, so I keep it on, but if battery life is more important to you, then keep it at 60. Speaking of speeding things up, while the S20s are incredibly powerful phones, we can make things feel a bit faster by speeding up animations. Firstly, go to Settings, then Advanced Features, scroll down, and then enable Reduce Animations. Once we've done that, go to the About Phone tab, tap on Software Information, and then tap Build Number 7 times to unlock the developer options. You can see I've already done this. Scroll right the way down and then change Window Animation, Transition Animation, and Animated Duration to either 0 or 0 0.5 times, which is where I have it. And altogether, this should make your phone feel a lot nippier. Just quickly guys, a big thank you to Starbucks for sponsoring this video. Now I love my job, but researching, filming, editing, it can all get a bit exhausting sometimes. So recently I've been drinking Starbucks' new Double Shot Intenso, which is just the caffeine boost I need to keep me going. You can't miss the bright red bottle, which is actually resealable if you want to save some for later, and 100% recyclable as well. Now I tend to drink my coffee black, so I go with the Double Shot Intenso Black, but if you prefer a splash of milk, there's also the dark option. They only cost £1.99 and you can pick them up in Sainsbury's stores here in the UK. Check out the link below to find out more, and why not grab a couple of Starbucks Double Shot Intensos next time you're in store. Okay, next up, let's turn on gestures. By default, we have these nav keys at the bottom, but if you go into settings, display, and then scroll down to navigation bar, tap on full screen gestures to turn them on. So with Android 10 on the S20, we get the latest gestures, so now you can swipe in from the edge to go back, which is very handy. Plus we get that little bit of extra screen back at the bottom where the nav keys used to be. Now Samsung's One UI software is generally pretty good actually, but there's a couple of things that I find a little bit annoying. Firstly, we have Samsung Daily, which is the little news feed to the left of the home screen. I just find it a little bit annoying sometimes when I accidentally swipe over and it starts refreshing everything. If you're like me and prefer not to have it, just pinch in and then tap the little toggle icon at the top to turn it off. Now for some reason, by default, when you hold down the power button, it activates Bixby, which absolutely no one wants to happen. It's a power button. So go to settings, advanced features, tap on side key, and then change press and hold to power off menu. Then it works as you'd expect it to. While we're here though, you can actually customize what double pressing the power button does. As standard, it opens the camera, which is how I like it, but you can make it a shortcut to open any app you like. All right, let's move on to the camera and Samsung have moved things about a little bit here. If you swipe over to the more tab, you can then drag the camera modes you want to use like live focus or slow motion down to the main carousel so they're much quicker to access. Also, while we're here, new to all S20s this year is the ability to shoot in 8K with a rear camera, which is kind of crazy actually. However, I'd avoid using 8K as while it's obviously incredibly sharp, it's not as stable, the frame rate is lower and the file sizes are huge. One minute of 8K is 600 megabytes. I think it's more of a technical showcase than something you'd actually want to use right now. Another new camera feature is single take. You can use it with either the front or the back cameras, and over 10 seconds it captures a bunch of photos, boomerangs, filtered shots, video. It's kind of fun for messing about with. But for more serious photos, I'd avoid using it as you don't always get the shot you want. It's up to the AI which one it picks. 
Now exclusive to the S20 Ultra are the 108 megapixel rear and 40 megapixel front cameras. By default, these super high res cameras actually combine pixels together, so you end up with more manageable 12 and 10 megapixels respectively. But if you want the full high resolution, perhaps for zooming in on, or if you're making a billboard ad for some reason, tap the little aspect ratio icon and you can switch to the full resolution. When it comes to unlocking the S20, we get an in-screen fingerprint reader and face unlocking. You can set both up, but what I would recommend is registering your face and fingerprint twice, as it adds more data and makes unlocking the phone a bit more reliable. For face unlock, adding an alternative look is useful if you wanted to recognize you with, say, sunglasses or a hat on. There's also a cool little feature called Quick Share that lets you transfer photos, videos, and files to other phones really quickly using Wi-Fi Direct. It's kind of like Apple's AirDrop, but for Samsung phones, and uniquely lets you share with up to five friends simultaneously. I tested it on my S10 and Note 10, and to give you an idea, a 500 megabyte 8K video I'd shot on the S20 took just 12 seconds to transfer to my S10. Not too shabby. Another handy feature is pinning apps open so they always open instantly. In the recently used apps menu, if you tap the icon of the app and then select keep open for quick launching, then it'll lock the app in place so the phone won't close it and it'll stay in memory. So then you can go straight back into it without having to reload. You can only do it with three apps, although I believe the 16 gig model of the Ultra can do it with five. And then you can tap the little lock icon at the bottom to unpin it. Okay, so that was 15 tips, but I'll throw in an extra bonus one just because you guys are my favorite. So let me show you Link to Windows, which lets you use the phone on the screen of your laptop or desktop PC. Just tap the icon in the shortcuts menu, sign in with your Microsoft account, and then on your Windows PC, open the Your Phone app and follow the instructions to connect them. You can then use your phone through your laptop, replying to messages, making calls, even copying photos and videos across with a simple drag and drop. It's definitely easier than picking up your phone every few minutes to see if you have any new notifications. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful, and if you think I've missed out on any good tips, then do let me know in the comments below, and then we can share them with the whole community. Don't forget to subscribe and also follow me on Instagram at the Tech Champ if you want to see more on the S20 and all the latest phone reviews. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Champ.